powered by MySunCoast.com. ABC 7 News at 11 starts now. The Suncoast still picking up the pieces tonight after a direct hit from Milton. This is new video showing the extent of the damage on Anna Marie Island. Plus an update on when Suncoast schools may be reopening. What we're learning from county officials in Manatee, Sarasota, and Charlotte County. And new at 11 o'clock, we do begin in Charlotte County as Hurricane Milton slams Florida. Good evening, everybody. I'm Rick Adams. And I'm Michaela Redmond. That's where we find our Jordan Litwiller on the extensive damage out of El Joe Bean Fishing Pier. As you can see behind me, the walkway up to the El Joe Bean Fishing Pier took a major hit from Hurricane Milton. It is completely washed away here, just about 100 yards or so further into the entrance. And we're right by where the Charlotte Harbor turns into the Mayaka River. And so the storm surge appearing to do some major damage here to the area. The landscape completely flattened and then continuing to push up and wipe out a lot of the portion of this walkway. It looks pretty similar to how Minnesota Key Road looks after some of these uh, bigger storms. And as for the current conditions, of Minnesota Key Road after Hurricane Milton. Oh, we weren't able to get a great look at that yet because when we tried to get to the south entrance of the bridge, there was National Guard and the Charlotte County Sheriff's Office there closing off that section. We've talked to some of the homeowners there, and one of the homeowners tells me that the two houses just down from her have completely washed away. And so obviously we'll keep you updated as we get access to that uh, Minnesota Key and get more information and, and better visuals as to what the reality is there. But as for the reality here on the El Bean Fishing Pier, it looks like it, it looks like it will be closed for the foreseeable future because some of the damage sustained here from Hurricane Milton. Guys, back to you in the studio. Residents returning to Sarasota today are seeing their homes for the first time since Hurricane Milton left a path of destruction through our area. Brianna Shaw speaking with one couple who evacuated to Orlando and came back to yet another mess. So here we go again. Jessica Seats and Joseph Gambert cleaning up their home and yard after being hit by hurricanes back to back. Their home flooded during Hurricane Helene, and they never finished cleaning up from that storm. They didn't really have enough time to clean everything up, so it was still sitting here and kind of blew off everywhere. So I'm seeing a sofa from us like way back there and something else way back there. They came back home after evacuating to Orlando ahead of Hurricane Milton, only to see their home of eight years washed out again. I would say inside probably two feet at least. So the furniture, whatever was left, was flooded again. On their way back home, they were met with yet another problem. Then we tried to find gas. We didn't have gas anymore. And it was like we were driving like almost four hours for gas. And then we were almost out. After finally getting gas, they were able to get back home, but also saddened to see their favorite restaurant in St. Ahmed's Circle, Venetia, damaged again. And they just reopened last Friday. So we went there Saturday. and kind of celebrated a little bit all the cleanup. The couple has grown to love the popular shopping district just walking distance from their home, which they're doing everything they can to salvage. We awesome. love our home. Yeah, we love it. Love to be here and uh, it's perfect here. We love it. We don't want but. to live here. Reporting in Sarasota, I'm Brianna Shaw. To Longboat Key now, both Rick and I were out on the island earlier today assessing the damage from Milton. Parts of Longboat Key destroyed in the process. Here's some of the damage we had seen a little bit earlier today. And we are here on the northern end of Longboat Key. This is where the fire chief and the town manager is saying that they suffer the most damage from Hurricane Milton. And back here, you could see a tree on top of looks like a home or it could be a garage and if we pan over uh, to the right over here we'll see a roof that had flown off of uh, somebody's home there and we are understanding that the damage here is more of wind damage and not storm surge that's what the town manager was telling me so a uh, wind event here from hurricane milton on longboat key yeah, Michaela, it was uh, definitely interesting uh, being out there and seeing that, but it seems like they actually got more damage from Helene than right, Milton. Right, right, and that's what a lot of the damage out there actually is. We want to show you more on the island with a large boat that landed on shore. Here in Longboat Key, we're just off of the main road in one of the neighborhoods, and this is what we just stumbled across. You can see this massive boat that is just washed up and beached itself on shore, and this is probably from when that storm surge was making its way on shore. The boat just totally came over, and now it's practically 
onto the side of the road here in certain places. We also have some kayaks and some canoes that are also just laying out on the road here along with a bunch of different debris, downed branches, stuff like that. But of course, this is a scary sight to see that a massive boat is just on the side of the road here. And it's obviously going to take a lot of work to get that back out onto the water if that is that plan. Now to an update on Suncoast schools. We start off in Manatee County. School officials telling us they hope to return October 15th following Milton. As of this evening, 33 schools in that area are still without power. And finally, in Charlotte County, dedicated staff members have been working hard to assess school damage caused by Milton and will continue to do so throughout the weekend. They have yet to make a decision as they are dealing with downed fences, power outages, and debris. And in Sarasota County, school officials say they will share an update tomorrow on when schools will reopen in Sarasota County. These details will be shared on all social media platforms. Taking a live look outside with our ABC7 Tower Cam, such a dramatic change compared to just a few days ago. Yeah, big, big difference. And meteorologist Leslie Lacey joining us now with a look at your weekend weather forecast. All right, so we've had a beautiful day today. And the good news is Mother Nature is cooperating with us when we need her the most. And that is during this cleanup time period and the aftermath of Milton. What you should know for some reminders is the beach conditions are still very unfavorable. You shouldn't be trying to go out into the water anywhere. Lots of debris and also lots of bacteria out there. You need to allow the cleanup crews to do their job and also for the beaches to get cleaner. Okay. We also are continuing, of course, to have the power outages, uh, but the good news is it's pretty much going to be a significantly lower humidity than what we have been seeing. So that is great for our cleanup crews and for you and me out there uh, taking all the debris out of our yards for the next uh, several days. And many people are going to be cleaning up for weeks and months to come. Hurricane season is not over. Just a quick reminder of that. We still need to keep that in mind. As we look at the watches and warnings, what we've got right now is a flood warning, but it's minor to moderate flooding. This is the Peace River here, okay, that stretches from DeSoto, Hardy, up into Polk County. This is where we have some moderate flooding. We're looking at uh, it's between two to five feet on all of these, a little bit more in the Peace River. Horse Creek area here, Little Manatee River, Manatee River, Mayaka River, all of them have some flooding, but most of it is minor, and again, the Peace River is is some moderate flooding, all right? And that's gonna be uh, good news for the rivers as far as our sunshine is concerned to help with evaporation because we're gonna have uh, plenty of it tomorrow. We'll have some clouds. Tonight's gonna be partly cloudy and we're, we're gonna wake up to about 70 degrees, a little cool in, cooler in our inland areas. So for those of you who don't have power, you can open up your windows and let that cooler air in and the lower humidity will even make it feel uh, cooler than that. But we are gonna climb back up into the mid 80. So we should get around 84, 85 with a feels like temperature of around 88. Back to you. Thank you, Leslie. Right now, Florida Power and Light Crews working extensively to restore power on the Sun Coast. They are targeting to get 90% of customers back with power by the end of the day on Monday, right here on the Sun Coast. FPL, FPL telling us they do expect to get 95% of customers back with power in Manatee, Sarasota, Charlotte, and DeSoto counties. That'll happen by Thursday, October 17th. And thinking of buying some gas after the storm, you might have to wait a long time to do so. Take a look at this line at the Wawa gas station on Fruitville Road. You can see all of the cars lined up to get gas and get this. There's even a separate line for bystanders with gas tanks to fill up. This is just one gas station, but many places that are open are experiencing the same situation. And the Van Wazel Performing Arts Hall in Sarasota canceling its shows through December. This was due to the damage from Hurricane Milton. These are pictures that you'll see here in a second taken inside the building. Officials saying the center experiencing up to four feet of storm surge. They do anticipate reopening on January 1st. And if you do have any tickets for any shows between now and then, you will be refunded. And you're taking a look at pictures from Sarasota Bradenton International Airport. Major damage to its roof and a hangar. The managers at SRQ were sheltered in the viewing lounge as the eye of Milton passed over the airport. That's where they did see the roof getting ripped off in front of their very own eyes. Mike Modric showing us what they had witnessed. This part of the roof membrane, that's the very first part that flew off of the roof. Basically, the wind got underneath a piece of that membrane 
and the airport workers, they watched it come over to these glass panels here, and these glass panels literally just shattered as the roof membrane came over here. And you can see all the broken glass here, the other parts of the membrane. There's a tremendous amount of cleanup to do here, and it all starts right here as they try to get that off of the structure. And temporary repairs costing nearly $400,000 should let the airport open Wednesday. The permanent repair will cost around $3 million. All right, coming up on ABC 7 News at 11 o'clock, we are taking you back to Longboat Key for some of the hardest hit areas on the Sun Coast. The assistant fire chief will have more on the status of that island. Plus, Florida Citrus already on a downward slope. Hurricane Milton making that even worse. What the CEO of Florida Citrus Mutual tells us about massive hurricanes in the past that hit the region. Hurricane Milton caused massive... Welcome back. Continuing our team coverage now on Hurricane Milton, we do head back to Longboat Key. Here was my experience earlier today at the island after Hurricane Milton swept through the area. Here on Longboat Key, one thing we want to point out to everybody is that these massive sand piles that you can see behind me here that also spread all the way up the street here are not actually from Hurricane Milton. Most of this happened during Hurricane Helene, along with a lot of this debris that is out here on the streets. Now, we did talk to the town manager for Longboat Key. He says right now 26% of power is restored, and you're going to see a big presence from FPL on this island within the next 24 hours as they're continuing to get the rest of these residents power restored but again as bad as it looks out here most of this was actually from Hurricane Helene and not Milton many officials saying they actually dodged a bullet and we do continue to follow the impact of Hurricane Milton on Longboat Key I did have an opportunity to speak with the assistant fire chief here is more on exactly what he had to say and we are here with Jensen Barton he is an assistant fire chief with Longboat Key fire and uh, chief Thanks so much for joining me. Uh, first off, just tell us about the status of Longboat Key at the moment. Well, right now we're still without water. Power is sporadic, 20-some percent maybe. Um, even our fire station, we don't have water. We're running on generator power, but we've rigged our uh, sprinkler system off of a well to give us water so we can be out here. Behind you, we have uh, a shower station and laundry station. Um, we also have bathrooms coming as well. Um, Milton kind of did its impact on a different level than Harleen. Uh, what, what Milton did was a lot of tree damage, a lot of power outages, a lot of access problems due to the trees falling. Um, and it was kind of the opposite of Helene, which was water and storm surge and a lot of sand and things like that, which we did, really didn't see much of here, which was very good for us because we were really, really nervous about the storm surge up to 15 feet plus. Um, you can see the beach standing here, so that was our big concern. And is it kind of that you're pleasantly surprised Absolutely. and our residents will be pleasantly surprised with Milton? Yeah, I, I do believe so. I mean, there is going to be more uh, of structural damage to tree collapses, things like that. I mean, in the back roads, there's some big trees that fell on houses and the big banyan trees. and. On Unfortunately, a lot of times that takes power lines with it. So that's why our power is so low. And FBL has rocked pretty hard on their substations and things like that, too. So we're in conjunction with all of that, we're, we're dealing with like quite the jigsaw puzzle to put back together. And from Helene, was there the flying debris because the wind was just so powerful? You know, yes and no. It, ironically enough, there are still large piles out there on the road of debris that you'll see are perfectly fine, and you'll find others that are flattened. But yes, there was uh, problems with the stuff across the road, couches, furniture, cushions, then floating with a little bit of rainwater we did. We did have flooding in our normal areas, um, so that did produce, you know, again, the things that float, and when it settles down, uh, it puts it everywhere. We had loaders out here scraping the roads again, getting it cleared up so we could respond. And last question, what do residents need to know as they're coming back from uh, where they had evacuated to? And uh, yeah, what, what's the important information residents need to know? So that's going to be stay safe, of course. Uh, there's no need to rush to something you can't do anything with. Uh, for example, we don't have water. So if you're coming here thinking you can stay here, you potentially can't. And if you do, it's not going to be very good conditions. You, don't, well, you wouldn't want to be here without water. Uh, luckily, the coal fronts are coming. might help us. And especially if you don't have power, you need power. Uh, look for debris and roadways. Uh, we'll pay attention. We have no traffic lights in some spots. You know, the four-way stops. It's treated as a stop sign. The lights aren't working. Uh, things like that. Uh, hygiene, because all the germs and once all this stuff starts settling, if you can't wash your hands and stay clean in the water, you get sicknesses and things like that. So infections and cuts and stuff. So that's very important for us. All right, Chief, thank you so much for your time yes, and uh, best of luck moving forward. We'll get through it. No problem.
And Hurricane Milton is expected to have a major impact on an already worse than expected citrus season. On Friday, the U.S. Department of Agriculture released a forecast for the 2024-25 season that showed an overall 16.8% decrease in citrus from last year. And that was before Milton tore across the state. Matt Joyner is the CEO of Florida Citrus Mutual. There's a lot of fruit on the ground. You know, what was promising to be a, a very hopeful season. We're, we're pretty discouraged to see that much. Uh, fruit blown off the trees to see a, a massive hurricane like this come across uh, the citrus region. Growers say it takes about two years for groves to recover from major storms and many plantings after 2022's Hurricane Ian were just starting to take hold. Okay, still ahead on ABC 7 News at 11 o'clock, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis visiting Bradenton Beach, FPL working overnight to restore power to that area. Key information, we'll have that for you when we come back. And welcome back in Manatee County. Governor Ron DeSantis holding one of many stops, this one over at Bradenton Beach. Hurricane Milton taking down many power poles, leaving millions without power. Our Sophia Vitello has more. Hey there, this is Sophia Vitello with ABC 7 News. Governor Ron DeSantis speaking in Bradenton Beach today. Here's the key takeaways that you need to know from what he said. First of all, he said that 1.7 million service accounts have been restored with power since the storm first hit. He says that FBL is working hard and power could be restored as early as tonight for a lot of folks. He also tells me that there is 1 million gallons of gas available in the state, but the problem is that our gas stations don't don't have generators. A lot of them don't. Uh, so that's why you're seeing some gas stations open, others not, because the pumps will not work without that power, without the generators. Now, he says that he would be willing to supply those generators, but if the power comes back on soon here in Manatee County, then it would be a waste. That's what he tells us, that that's why they're holding back on supplying those generators. Now, in regards to debris removal, he tells me the state has been working hard, but now it's time for county and city officials to step in and get that debris out of there. He tells me also, though, that FEMA is working on incentives to get haulers over here that can help with this debris removal since a lot of our smaller cities and counties need that help. They will need that extra help because they don't have that funding. And lastly, they tell me that they have submitted a disaster declaration request for FEMA. So that means that if you are in need of shelter, if you went to a hotel, you needed somewhere to go and you need funding help, help could be on the way very soon because temporary shelter assistance, that's what FEMA would be working on from this disaster declaration request. Those are all the key takeaways that you needed to know from Governor Ron DeSantis today in Bradenton Beach. Yeah, lots going on out there. Staying in Manatee County, we are showing you more hurricane damage out of that area. Our very own chief meteorologist, Bob Harrigan, out in the fields near down power lines. When the backside of Milton came in, wind gusts were as high as to 100 and 105 miles an hour, racing across Tampa Bay, across the Manatee River, right here to 75th Street in northwest Bradenton, leading to the DeSoto Memorial Park. And you can see it is blocked off here with caution tape as a result of that. A power line pole snapped in half with some heavy duty power on it. And uh, this is the dangers we face. These are the dangers we face as we go through cleanup. It's going to be a long time before power is restored in this neighborhood. I'm Bob Harrigan reporting from Northwest Bradenton, ABC 7, your local station. Okay, we've had some wonderful weather today. The big question is, will it continue? It looks pretty good. I've got all the details on your seven-day outlook and a look at the tropics. It looks like we do have a disturbance that we are tracking, and I'm going to give you all the details because, of course, we are not out of hurricane season just yet. We'll be right back after this. Time and Temp brought to you by the Men. Hurricane season not over yet until November 30th, and even then we have seen hurricanes in the past come past uh, November, although it's very rare. So we are currently tracking a disturbance off of the coast of Africa here. It has a 50% chance of development in the next two and seven days, although the models aren't showing much of anything happening with that. Again, very far away. Uh, as we look at the enhanced satellite picture, this is the area that we are looking at, a tropical wave right now. And then also I want to show you what is 
is now post-tropical cyclone Milton that did give Bermuda, see that little black dot there? That is Bermuda, so it did give some bad weather out there, but certainly nothing like what we experienced here on the Sun Coast area with landfall at Siesta Key at 8.30 in the evening. All right, so let's look at the uh, future cast. I just want to show you again uh, the American model, not showing really any development in that area that I just showed you, but it does show the potential for maybe something to develop uh, down here. Uh, but this is far out, you know, this is a full seven days and other models are not showing this. So I just kind of want to uh, throw a grain of salt at you and take that into consideration. So this would be next Friday, some, you know, areas of uh, a disturbances, possible development in the Caribbean Sea. And then as we move over to the European model, again, uh, no signs of anything really developing over here with that uh, tropical wave that I was showing you, the disturbance there and this area here that we saw maybe uh, some tropical development with the American model, not showing anything with the European model, okay? So that's why you can't just take one model into consideration, you have to wait. All right, let's take a look at the names. What would be next on the list? I do expect us to get another named storm. Hopefully it won't be in our area, but I do expect it to happen. And the next on the list would be Nadine. All right, so as we move forward now into the aftermath and the recovery of Milton, we are again tracking that disturbance we do have many power outages. The work, crews are working as hard as they can. I just remember, they've got power outages at their homes too. And I have been tracking the numbers. They have been decreasing. And it was in the 40 percentile area. Um, uh, for some places, uh, it was looking much better over in DeSoto County and Hardy, Hardy County. They're still working. And Manatee County, you know, still a lot of people without power. Excessive debris out there. So you want to be very careful, especially you don't want to go into the waterways be very dangerous so the beaches are just not favorable so for your boating forecast keep in mind a small craft exercise caution statement is in effect and for Saturday it's gonna be pretty choppy out there we've got northeast winds about 10 to 15 miles per hour we're gonna get some gusts up to about 20 but the seas the seas are gonna be say three to five somewhere upwards of six feet so you want to remember that and also uh, there is a lot of debris out there it's probably not the best time to take your boat out uh, there might be you know as far as uh, trees and, and logs and stuff floating out there that you don't even see that could really damage your engine. Okay, Sunday things get better. Moderate chop here. Seas about two feet. The winds start to calm down over the next few days uh, in Bay and Inland Waters, 20 miles out. But northeast, about five to ten knots, really calms down Monday with a moderate chop. So Monday looking a lot better uh, than even Sunday and Saturday, of course, not looking that good. We're going to climb up to the mid 80s. Again, we're going to have a high around 85. Dew points. Look at this sticking around in the 60s. We love love to see that. Why do we love to see that? Because it brings down the humidity. So the heat index is only going to be in the upper 80s. That will be nice. Moisture available for rain. Oh, we've got a front coming in. Once we get into the week, it's going to bring down the temperatures even more. So let's take a look at that seven day forecast for you. Here it is. And as you can see, we're going to stick around in the 80s through Tuesday. We have a then we have a front coming in midweek. It'll take us down to the upper 70s. Very low rain chances. We will be right back after this. ABC 7, your local station. Just fingers crossed that everyone gets their power back. I know, I know. We're, we're just like many of you at home. I've been without power since the storm. And like Leslie was saying, the weekend's looking good for recovery. Yes. So that's a good thing. And boy, oh boy, mm. what a week. Right. Thanks so much for joining us. Jimmy Kimmel's up next. Have a great night.